Happy Sunday, everybody. It's me, your pal Jonathan from Church, here to give the middle school YouTube channel Sunday Morning Devo. How are y'all doing? You guys doing good? You've been watching the uh, you've been watching the good the Good Morning Show. It's not it's not Good Middle School Morning anymore. It's the Good Morning Show. It's our special morning show here on our YouTube channel. Check it out. We got some videos up there. Last week's video. The girls got together and they did a bit of a, a Mario Kart race. And if you wait around till the end of that video, it's a girls only, mostly girls only episode. If you wait around till the very end of that video, there's a very cool surprise. But, you know, they did a good job. They did. I, the ladies did a very fantastic job in their episode with their Mario Kart and their balloons. And you, you know what? You just check it out, please. It's an excellent episode. Rachel, Krista, and Rhiannon just did a fantastic Fantastic job, but look, we're not sitting around here talking about our morning show, shameless plug. We're here this morning to go through the Bible and do a quick morning devo this lovely Sunday of Sundays. So today, we're going to be in the book of Romans. So if you would please open up in your Bibles and flip to the book of Romans. We're going to be checking that book out today. We're in Romans chapter 12. All right, we're only going to look at two verses this morning. Just two verses in Romans chapter 12. It's going to be Romans, 1, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. So flip in your Bibles to Romans 12. We're going to start in verse 1. Let me go ahead and read that. Romans 12, verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So these words were written by the Apostle Paul, and he wrote them, as the name of the book implies, to the Roman church. So why was Paul writing this letter, or specifically, why was Paul writing uh, this chapter and these two verses to the Romans? Well, Paul was trying to explain to the Roman believers how you can be transformed from a sinful life to a life of God and what that process looked like and how we could put certain stuff into practice in order to make ourselves get closer to the Lord. And so the reason, the reason this passage is included in the Bible is because the issue that the Roman church was facing was not just a one and done issue for them. The issue that Paul's writing about is something good for us all to learn about because we're all every day trying to get closer to the Lord, trying to figure out how we can have more and more peace with him. And so there's actually a lot packed into these two verses that Paul was talking about. It's stuff that was applicable back then with the Roman church back in the day, 2,000 years ago. And it's stuff that, you know, two millennia later is still important for us to know as the modern church. So today we're going to jump into the message of how we can have transformed minds, how we can be renewed by the transforming of our minds to Christ. So that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. So one of the biggest things, probably the biggest thing as followers of Christ is the fact that we are surrendering our complete and entire lives to Jesus that means, and it's, it's tough, it's a big commitment, because no longer are we living for our own desires, no longer are we living for the desires of others, no, now we're living for the desires of Christ. Now we're living for God completely and fully. And, and that's tough, it means that we're putting our faith in someone we can't even see, trusting that he knows perfectly the way for us to live, but more so, we're putting our full love in him, saying, you know what, I don't care about anything else. You're the most important thing in my life. And that's a big, tough commitment. And so for any of you who have made it, congratulations, it's amazing. And for any of you who haven't yet made that commitment, I encourage you, think about it, study it more, and open your hearts to it. Because while it's a big commitment, it's the best one you could ever make. Anyway, so part of giving our entire selves to the Lord means that we're giving our thoughts to him. All right, we're committing our thoughts to the Lord. And so I can't really overstate how important our thoughts are. Seriously, like, do you realize how huge 
what goes on in here is all of our actions begin as thoughts. Now, for some of you, those might be very underdeveloped thoughts. You might think, oh, I'm hungry, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna eat four McDoubles. Sometimes that's that's not really a well-developed thought. You just go for it and you're barfing up greasy McDoubles everywhere. We've all been there, don't worry boys, it's okay. We don't need to go down any dark uh, memories. Anyway, so thoughts influence our actions. All of our actions begin as thoughts, whether they're small, teeny, tiny, undeveloped thoughts, or huge, massive, well-thought-out thoughts. So our thoughts shape our actions, and our actions shape who we are. So in a way, our thoughts shape the very people that we become. That's huge. I can't overstate that enough. Negative thoughts make negative people. Positive thoughts make positive people. And godly thoughts make godly people. So if we allow God to come into our minds and to transform them, to make our thoughts look more like him, then we're going to be brought closer to God. And it's possible, and it's a pretty good deal, but how do we do that? How do we allow something like that to happen? Well, first off, I'm going to tell you one word that's going to be really important for you to remember if you want to make your thoughts be transformed by God. Grace. Grace. The Bible teaches that we cannot get better or closer to God by our own actions and efforts. It's God working in us. Any positive thing that happens in our lives is the Holy Spirit within us. It's not our own human action. So if you want transformed minds, if you want to transform your mind to Christ, then you're going to need to have grace for yourself because God has grace for you. Because look, no one is 100% capable of having nothing but godly thoughts all the time. I'm sorry, the only person who was like that was Jesus, and Jesus is God. We're not God. We're never going to have completely godly through and through thoughts. It's just not the way it works. So you're going to need to have grace for yourself. It's, it's fine. It's fine to mess up every now and again, just as long as you're willing to acknowledge Christ, seek him, and continue going after him through the midst of your mistakes. That's okay. It's okay to mess up. That's a normal part of being human. Don't beat yourself up if you say to yourself, I'm going to have nothing but godly thoughts. Then you have a nasty thought and you do a nasty thing. Don't beat yourself up. Instead, just say, Lord, forgive me for my mistake. Help transform my thoughts further. And then continue going after him. Because look, God doesn't want us beating ourselves up. He wants us seeking more of him. So if you want transformed thoughts, that's a great place to start with it. Also, think about the stuff that might be influencing you. Now, think about the things that you surround yourself with every day. What are the things that you're reading? What are the things that you're seeing? What are the things that you're hearing? What are the things that you're listening to? Who are the people around you? The stuff that we see and interact with on a day-to-day -day basis subtly, sometimes subtly, not some, sometimes not so subtly, influences our thoughts, All right? The outside world is great at that. So we gotta be very careful to surround ourselves with things and to have the Lord train us up to be influenced by the right things. So ask yourself, are the things that I'm around today, the things that I see on a day-to-day -day basis, are they influencing my thoughts in a negative way? or in a positive way. I think lastly, just a really great way of keeping God present in your thoughts is realizing that God's around us all the time. I'm reading this book right now. It's the third time I'm reading it. It's called Practicing the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. I recommend it. It's an easy book to read, super short. It's an awesome book. I love it. It's very simple. And basically, the main point of the book is this. We're always in God's presence. God's everywhere. To get closer to God, we should live every day like he's right next to us. Because he really kind of is. Live out every day knowing that he's near. And everything we do, we do it for the Lord. 
Every little thing we do, we say, God is with me right now. I'm going to do this for God, whether I'm making eggs, whether I'm doing homework, whether I'm honestly just chilling and playing Minecraft with my friends. Whatever it is, do it unto the glory of the Lord, and that will really help our thoughts. Think about how God is around you, how he's with you, walking alongside you. These thoughts will help us come closer to the Lord. So think about, let, let the things that you see, let the things that you listen to, let the things that influence you be the things of God. Live out each day saying, God, you're with me, and that's fantastic. Guide my thoughts, guide my actions, and he will. If we invite the Lord into our minds, he'll come in and he'll make his home there. It's a process, and we need grace, but we can all be transformed by the renewing of our minds by accepting Christ into them. It's a wonderful thing to do, and it's totally worth it. Let me pray for you guys. Dear Lord, I pray that now, on this Sunday morning, we all just come together in a moment of silence to let you come into our thoughts and our minds. Transform our thoughts. Take away the thoughts that will lead us further from you. Bring us closer, God to your grace, your mercy, and your character. Show us how we can live for you, and let all that begin in our hearts and in our minds. I thank you, Jesus, for your grace, for your love for all my brothers and sisters. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. I'm out of here. I'm really hungry. I'm going to go eat something, probably not for McDoubles. Uh, but hey, have a great Sunday, and we'll see you all out soon. Goodbye.